And then Jim, if you have the, uh, do you happen to have the format in front of you? Um, yeah, I just have a 10 minute opening statement. Uh, the uh, cross-examination, I guess you guys want to do 10 minutes on that? Sure. Yeah. Okay, and then a, a 40 minute um, cross examination um, slash open discussion. Awesome. Well, well, oh, well no, actually, let, let's do a let's do a, a 20 minute uh, cross examination with a 20 minute um, uh, open discussion and then we'll do the Q&A. Hey everybody, today we are debating Does God Exist? And we are starting right now. Hey everybody, stoked to have you here. And Jim, I just realized I'm so sorry. I told you I was gonna have you do that part and out of habit I did it. So wanna let everybody no know. Worries, man. Thanks for your patience. It's uh I get nervous, I'm excited because this is huge. So first it's can gonna I be a good one. Absolutely. Can I say also thanks to Jim Majors for helping out with the channel this week. Uh, the channel almost went silent for a week because I got just uh, just completely swamped. And so, Jim, thank you so much for stepping in and moderating this week without me. Of course, man. No, no problem. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. We had a great couple of debates and the live chat was great. So it was a good time. Dude, Anytime. Jim did a superb job and he is here tonight to help co-mod, we're co-modding together for this epic debate. The one that, uh, you know what, believe it or not, despite the thumbnail, we think that this is going to be a, a good dialogue that isn't going to turn into a crazy dumpster fire. So with that, we're going to jump right into it. First, wanna say, if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. We are very excited for a lot of future debates and we're trying to build a very diverse, ideologically diverse community, people from all sorts of different views, whether Christian, atheist, agnostic, Muslim, Republican, Democrat. We want everybody here because we do not want this to become an echo chamber. We want to have as many different views kind of sharpening each other uh, in that way as much as possible. And so, as I mentioned, a lot of really big debates coming up. This is one of them. Friday, April 12th, Dr. Robert M. Price, who has debated people like Bart Ehrman, William Lane Craig, he will be here debating the Christian apologist Jonathan Sheffield on whether or not a historical intellectual case can be made for the Christian faith. So do not miss out on that. That's going to be very big. We're excited for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. And with that, we are going to now start introducing everybody for this epic debate tonight. Uh, hopefully the internet doesn't explode. But uh, I'll start by just saying, as you know, I, I already introduced Jim briefly. Jim Majors has been helping with the channel in a trillion different ways. Uh, glad to see you again, Jim. Good to see you, man, always. And then Raging Atheist and Matt Powell, who, by the way, I just learned something super interesting about these guys just today. Did you know, like, Matt Powell, is it true that you're like, like a six foot five or six foot four? I'm actually six three. Six oh, so you are, you are slightly shorter than I am then. <laughs> so these guys, I had no idea. Matt Powell's 6'3", which puts him, I'm pretty sure that's like two standard deviations above the mean, which basically means only 2% of people are taller than Matt. Actually, 2% of men, so probably like 1% or less of the entire human population. And then Raging Atheist, even taller at, is it 6'5"? I'm just under 6'5". Wow. Just under six five. <laughs> these are two... It's all about the reach. <laughs> yes. <laughs> these towering gentlemen uh, are joining us and we're excited for it. They're, uh, you can find both their links in the description and we highly encourage you to check out their content as uh, they've both been influential. They've both made waves. Uh, both men, you can say, mildly provocative on YouTube. And you know what? The, the trick though is at this channel, we're like, hey, you know what? You can be provocative, and we're, we're glad to have you here. So, uh, whether you're provocative or not, we will start with Raging Atheist. If you want to share what you've been up to at your channel, thanks for coming back on. We're glad to have you. And just like, a, as we usually do, like a sentence or two about what you've been up to at your channel. We're excited to have you here, and thanks for being here. Do right, you want to go first, Matt? Or I'll, I'll go first. Um, I'm the Raging Atheist. Um, 
Nakasuchi. Uh, I make response videos. I'm doing a lot of live shows on my channel. Um, you can come check me out and subscribe. I have a whole playlist dedicated to our friend Matt Powell here called Dancing with the Devil. Gotcha. Thank you very much. And uh, Matt Powell, glad to have you here. Thanks for coming on. James, thank you so much for having me in. So my channel, just a real brief introduction to who I am and my channel. So I'm a preacher. I'm a college student as well. I love college. Um, I love just education. I love science. And I really love the Bible. And um, I'm part of the independent Baptist movement. And uh, I've been saved since I was 11 years old. And just ever since then, trying to preach the gospel to every creature. And so I produced a film in which Raging Atheist is featured in it numerous times, entitled Science Falsely So-Called. And uh, we may end up discussing a little bit of that tonight, but I'm looking forward to tonight's discussion. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. It's uh, going to be a blast, and I will kick it over to Jim, who will explain the format to everybody and get our debaters started. Thanks, James. Uh, real quick, before I, uh, before I do that, I'm just going to reiterate what James said. Guys, just please just subscribe to this. This is solid content coming out of here. Uh, there's a reason that I'm here so often because I love what, what James is doing with modern day debate. You guys uh, give him some love. Uh, and with that being said, uh, the format for tonight, we're going to have a 10 minute opening from each person. We're going to start with the person taking the affirmative here. That's going to be Matt Powell. And we're going to go into a 10 minute cross examination afterwards where they're going to be asking each other questions. Um, and a 20 minute cross examination. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a, a 20 minute open discussion in which they're going to be um, uh, just talking back and forth. Uh, and then we're gonna open that up into a Q and A. Um, so if you guys want to ask questions to either of our debaters tonight, uh, just uh, at Modern Day Debate or at Jim Majors in the, uh, in the live chat and uh, we will make sure to get those read for you. Absolutely. And with that, we will get our debaters started. While I am setting up the clock, Mr. Majors, We'll uh, just let the debaters know how we will move forward. So thank you very much, Jim. Sure, no problem. Okay, guys, uh, it's going to be a clean fight, nothing below the belt. Uh, oh, wait, wrong wrong thing. Um, okay, uh, so uh, Matt, you're going to go first with our, a 10-minute opening. So if you want to go ahead and uh, state your case, I'm going to start the timer whenever you start talking. All righty. Hey, thank you so much. Well, <clears throat> I'd just like to state that you know, the Bible says, and I believe the Bible very firmly, and that's where I get the foundation of my faith and practice. And the Bible says, just right off the bat, O Timothy, in 1 Timothy 6.20, it says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called. So before any of this stuff came out with the atheist community and the idea that God didn't exist, uh, God had warned us in the Bible that science falsely so called would come about and would deny the flood, deny the Bible, deny himself. And uh, the Bible also says for the invisible things of him, talking about God from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they're without excuse. So they're without excuse. Anybody that doesn't believe in God, the creator God, especially the God of the Bible, the Bible says that they're without excuse in Romans 1.20. And so there's many reasons and many levels by which you could debunk atheism very simply. And I'm going to go ahead and do that here for you tonight. So pay close attention, viewer, because these are very important facts um, from atheists and from Christians, from the founders of science and so forth, that are very important to take into consideration whether you're going to desi desire to be an atheist or a Christian. So <clears throat> to start out, you know, we have to look at the mathematical equations and the mathematical odds of a universe coming from nothing. And um, I'm going to go ahead and just, instead of diving into that, let's dive into a little bit of uh, mathematics. So <clears throat> obviously Stephen Hawking, he was a famous scientist who had passed on last year. He said, and I quote, he said that if the expansion rate, he said the universe would not exist. And this, by the way, this is an exact quote from him. I'm quoting word for word. Every quote I use is word for word. Otherwise, I will not tell you that it's a word for word quote. I won't use it as a quote, but because <clears throat> I get accused of that. But he said, and I quote, he said, the universe would not exist if there was a decrease in the expansion rate one second after the Big Bang by only one part in 100,000 million million. So that's one chance out of 100,000 million million chances 
that the world would come into being by chance. And so sometimes I'll speak at universities and ask students whenever I speak at the universities, hey, if you think that this odd could happen by itself without intelligence behind it, what would you call that person? And they'll always say a liar, you know, a fool, a ridiculous person. And the Bible says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And so anybody that believes that those odds could come about by chance, um, the Bible says is a fool. And the Bible also says professing themselves to be wise. So stating they believe in science, stating they have wisdom, they became fools. And Stephen Hawking's, excuse me, Stephen Hawking also said that it would be very difficult to explain why God would create, why the universe would be designed in such a way, except as an act from God who intended to create beings like us. So even he was like, look, this is a powerful case for intelligent design. But one of the most important things for people to realize um, if they're going to look at just, and that's one of the most simple mathematical equations. You know, the chances of a functional protein, just the smallest protein that's functional, existing by chance is 10 to the 164th power. So that is a ridiculous number. So anybody that says, yeah, I believe that you know, 10 to the 164th power is a great thing that could just happen by itself and happen by chance. That's foolish. And by the way, that odd, that mathematical equation has to happen simultaneously trillions of times. Why? Because there's trillions of proteins in our universe. And this is why the agnostic astronomer Robert Jastro said, and this, this guy's an agnostic. He was not a believer in God. He was not a believer in Jesus. He said, and I quote, he said, um, <clears throat> he said, astronomers now find that they've painted themselves into a corner because they've proven by their own methods that the universe began abruptly in an act of creation to which it can trace the seeds of every star, every planet, every living thing in this cosmos and on the earth. And they have found that this is a product of forces that they cannot hope to discover. So he's saying, look, there is something beyond our universe. And he said that there are what I or anyone would call supernatural forces at work is now, I think, a scientifically proven fact. And that's from an agnostic astronomer. So we have to look at what these scientists are saying, um, even what some of these agnostics are saying. They're admitting that it takes intelligence to create life. And if we look at just the simplest protein in, in, in the world, it requires tons of information and tons of um, cells and stuff to make up that stuff. And if that wasn't the case, then life could not exist. And even one of the most famous teachers of evolution, the co-founder of evolution, Ernst Haeckel himself, who was convicted of fraud by his own university, by the way, he said, and I quote, he said, <clears throat> spontaneous generation must be true. Now, whenever somebody says something must be true, you ever see the movies where they're like, oh, this must be true. You know, obviously, that's a that's a state that statement must be true. That phrase is a phrase of desperation. So Ernst Haeckel was desperate and he's saying spontaneous generation must be true, not because it had been proven in the laboratory, but because otherwise it would be necessary to believe in a creator. That's what he said. And so he's saying if spontaneous generation did not happen, then I would have to believe in God. Ernst Haeckel didn't want to believe in God. He wanted to believe what he wanted to believe. And so therefore he believed in spontaneous generation or something that's known as abiogenesis, something that we've never observed in the universe. The first part of the scientific method is to make an observation. If we can't observe life coming from non-living material, then it's not science. You know, I was in a debate one time and the atheist told me, he says, well, I can't believe that you believe that there was this Jewish man that died and resurrected from the dead. I can't believe that you believe in this thing known as the resurrection. And I looked at that man. I said, hey, would you look at what you're saying? You believe that every living thing came to life out of non-existence through spontaneous generation without any intelligence behind it. How much time do I have left? Do you have, sir, I've got 318. Okay, great. I'm going to have to move quickly here. <clears throat> so fundamentally, and I could go on for hours and hours and hours, um, but obviously the time is limited. But I just want to state that atheism is a worldview that is fundamentally unscientific. I don't have a problem if somebody wants to be an atheist, but it violates every known scientific law known to man. For example, the first law of thermodynamics states that matter cannot be created or destroyed. 
It's also known as the conservation of matter and energy. So since matter cannot be created, excuse me, or destroyed, by default, if there was no matter, something outside of our system would have had to bring matter into existence. And to say that it's not intelligent, that the cause was not intelligent that did that, is foolish based on the mathematical equations that we observe. And the Bible also says that the heavens declare the glory of God and that people that don't believe in God are without excuse. They have no excuse and they believe what they want. And, you know, sometimes I bring these facts forward to atheists and I'll say, well, do you realize this violates your worldview? And then they say, well, I don't have a worldview. And then they're like, and, and then I'm like, well, is that your worldview that you don't have a worldview? You know, at one time I had a guy tell me, well, there is no truth. It, well, is that true? Because if it's true that there's no truth, how can we be sure that anything's true? How can we be sure that that statement you said is just true? You know, and I've had them say, well, I can't be sure of anything. Well, you seem sure that you're not sure of anything else. That's for sure. You know, so anybody that believes in atheism or Gnosticism or that God just doesn't exist and there's no absolute truth or absolute morality, they've even said, well, there are no absolutes. Well, are you absolutely sure about that? So it just again and again, it violates the laws of science, the laws of logic and raging atheist here. If he was honest, I believe that he would admit that these facts are facts. They're not just ideas. These are quotes from actual scientists. They're not quote mind. They're exactly what they meant. And in closing, I'll, I'll just leave, uh, I'll leave with two quotes here. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson said, and I quote, because these guys, they've been painted into a corner. They don't have a choice. Intelligent design is there. Neil deGrasse Tyson said, and I quote, he said, it's hard to argue against the possibility that all of us are not just a creation of some kid in a parent's basement programming up a world for their own entertainment. So Neil deGrasse Tyson believed that intelligent design was possible, not by God, but by a fourth grader in his parents' basement, you know. So it takes a lot of faith to believe something like that. And then the last quote is one from Richard Dawkins. He says, if we were to look at the details of biochemistry and molecular biology, he says, I suppose you might find the, the fingerprint of some sort of designer. And that designer could well be a higher intelligence from elsewhere in the universe. So he's saying, look, it could be another designer other than God, but not the God of the Bible. The Bible says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And the Bible says, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Thank you. Ran out of time. Thank you very much, Matt. And one reminder really quick, I'll, I'll kick it right back over to Jim, but just wanted to mention to people, uh, our friends in the live chat, thank you so much for your questions. Uh, I think Jim might have covered it at Super Chats. Uh, basically, if you have a Super Chat, it will be, uh, you can make a comment if you want to one of the debaters to respond to. And also, all Super Chats go to the very top of the list automatically throughout the debate or the Q&A. And one last thing about the chats is that, uh, I was thinking about this today, the philosophy of the channel, namely, if you can do me a favor, try. Uh, I like it that we want to have tough skin, and ideally our attitude is to always be like, hey, like, let's just stick some stones. I'm actually, um, I think that's the best outlook we can have for our, ourselves. Uh, for others, though, ideally we won't attack them uh, personally. So it's okay to attack ideas, but we won't censor you in the live chat if you are abusing somebody even like we will even let that fly but we would ask you to not do it so with that i, I generally it's not like that like it's 99 percent of the time it's great and 99 percent of the people are great it's just once in a while it comes up so okay jim kicking it back over to you and i've got the clock <clears throat> logged in so uh, i can put the clock on, right on. Uh, we, we got a great first 10 minutes uh, introduction by matt powell and now we're going to turn it over to raging atheist for his 10 minutes i'm going to do the same thing for you start when you start talking we're going to give you a two minute warning and then we will move on to the uh the cross-examination portion all right hopefully my video is going to be ready to go when i'm ready for it james um matt nothing new god nothing new all right, so I'm trying to fit this into 10 minutes. Timer, uh, I will start the timer when James starts the video. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, no, the, the video, you start your timer now because the video is going to oh, start okay. part, part, right on. part through right it. On. All right, so no, start now. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's go. I'm going to read from the script. I don't usually do this. I usually ha have disdain for this, but 
I, I came prepared. Hold on. Uh, one second. So sorry. I just want to make sure. And I'll give you your time back, Rage. I, I might have misunderstood. I'm really sorry. Did you want... Uh, you don't have the video up, right? So in other words, I'll play it through me having yeah. it up on my page. Okay. You got it. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll say when I'm ready for it to start playing and then we'll pause it once or twice. Okay. And then I'm going to restart. Okay. And we'll start your 10 minutes right now. All right. So reading from a script. Does God exist? A worthy question asked by humans since we were capable of thinking such thoughts. God, Matt here didn't even address it. Does God exist? My thought, my immediate answer is no, but I cannot prove that. My opponent here will tell you yes, but he cannot prove that. I could grant the premise and there is a creator God and then make my opponent here prove that his God is that creator instead of all the others. Indeed, I have danced that dance before with my opponent. You will find all of the work I have done on Matt on my page in its own section called Dancing with the Devil. Does God exist? A question that has never been truly answered. Neither side of this question can prove their claims. It is a stalemate as uh, soon as the question is asked. <clears throat> I have no interest in this question. I am not here to even entertain it, though I might. I am here because I have history with my opponent. We have bad blood. If Matt Powell wants me to believe a word that comes out of his mouth, he must answer some questions and he must answer some wrongs. So maybe we can move on. Because if God exists, it would not choose Matt Powell to be his representative in this debate right now, at least I would hope. I mean, my opponent thinks gay people should be killed, which is ridiculous. I am simply here to get Matt to admit he was wrong and maybe find a way to end our feud, which is the debate that Matt himself approached me with. In your movie, Science Falsely So-Called, you quote mind our conversation blatantly misrepresented me and my beliefs in order to make me look inferior to you. I'm about to show you, Matt, how your ethics and integrity are the questions here tonight. So now we can start the clip, please. You bet. Uh, moving to full screen, if you can give me one second. Here is the clip. And we're going to pause it at 226.07. 226, so now we're going to get into a blatant lie, a blatant edit. So as you're watching this next clip, try to pay attention to Matt speaking. And then once Matt speaks, try to see the cut. You'll, you can see it if you're paying attention. And then I'll speak and I'll answer. Answer. And then I'll play the part in our, in, in our conversation that proves that he edited to that. And then if you don't quite catch it, we'll I'm play that clip again after Matt's. James. You have it's to accept working. by faith that one out of 100,000 million million chances fine, happen, honestly. and that's just the beginning. I wish Matt could hear. So you but accept by faith that that happened by chance, correct? The universe I'm playing my, out. Um, uh, the universe has a mind of its own, and, and it creates life. It creates galaxies. I cannot it hear a thing. Individual systems for life to expand. It, it could be a number of. Give things. me one All sec, right, man. So I, hopefully you guys saw the cut. Now let's see the real conversation. That there's only two it, it's, it's playing the so audio, James. It's playing it through on the video. The created itself. No. Every other, well, then give me another possibility. Um, the universe shoots us out. Uh, the universe has a mind of its own, and it, and it creates life. It creates so, galaxies. It creates individual systems for life to expand. It, it could be a number of things. There's, to say that there's two possibilities is a fallacy. Okay. All right, so Matt, what I'm playing is there my, you have me my, responding uh, to Matt's absolute, to movie, not the question. From the movie, it misedited me, and I'm playing two. So let's clips check it out. Edits. The movie clip. Let's talk about the origin of life. Obviously, for evolution to be possible and for things to come into I'm assuming I'm not allowed to speak. With such precision, it would take a decision. Obviously, the sun is burning down, the moon is getting further away, the earth is slowing yes, down it's, in its rotation. Somebody wound things up very precisely, and if any one of those quantities were tweaked at all, no life could exist. See, you can say that there's design in everything. I'm not going to disagree with that. There is the universe could have designed itself. Oh my God. Oh my God. Raging atheist. How could you get that answer? Maybe because 
That's not what I said in that context. Maybe it's because he put that answer there in that context. Just maybe. Obviously, the sun is burning down. The moon is getting further away. Can the audience the hear us at all? Down in its Talking. Yes. Somebody wound things up okay. very precisely. And if any one of those quantities were tweaked at all, no life could exist. Yeah. So now let's talk about life itself. So life requires, for, for just one cell, it requires 30 mechanisms to be able to work. I think uh, you asked me to stop at 226. We're at 235. Is that good, Rage? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll respond real quick. So in that first clip there, Matt takes me responding to absolutes from a different part of the conversation and edits it in to make it look like I'm answering a question. When I'm not answering that question, he clearly edits it in to make it look that way. Now you can continue, please. Gotcha. We will uh, go back to the clip. So this is most intriguing. I told you, I told you exactly this is what I was going to talk statement. about. He didn't interrupt you. We will go back to the clip. Here it is. Work. Now, if we stick those 30 mechanisms all together, let's say, for example, you and I went to a lab and I said, okay, we're going to throw DNA, RNA, and even some membranes in a can of soup. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to put all this together. And these are things that contain life. These are, these are what life is made of. This is what life is made out of is DNA, RNA, and membranes. Mm -hmm. If I was to put all that together, it would not create life. And in fact, they've never created life. So let me ask you this. So you're saying scientifically we've never created life? Well, even if we did create life, wouldn't that mean there was an intelligence behind it? Well, in, in that situation, yes. Um, well, that situation would... There you have it. There you have it. Now, I don't have my answer because my answer is from the second segment that he managed to sabotage my equipment and I did not get that segment. And I'm gonna show you more examples of what I don't have, what's not in my conversation. I put everything I have in my Matt Powell, my Raging Atheist versus Matt Powell video. That was all of my footage. So he managed to successfully get rid of one of my segments that I couldn't cover. So I can't show you how that answer, what context that answer came from. But I did just show you that I did not answer with that answer. That it wasn't even a question. He kept talking. Check it out again. Let's talk about the origin of life. Obviously for evolution to be possible and for things to come into being with such precision, it would take a decision. Obviously the sun is burning down, the moon is getting further away, the earth is slowing down in its rotation. Somebody wound things up very precisely and if any one of those quantities were tweaked at all, no life could exist. See, you can say that there's design. And Coming everything. up on two minutes, I'm man. not going to. I'm sorry, um, uh, raging atheist. There is the universe could have designed itself. Gotcha. All right, we are now switching back to the dialogue box. All right. So, am I good? Yes. So in the in the second clip, I'm not sure how it got got viewed, but in the movie cl clip, he talk, he cuts to us walking up the stairs. Matt is still talking. Hands with uh, ends with any of those qualities were tweaked at all. No life can exist. But then he edits in an answer. <clears throat> and my unedited version of the conversation, there is no answer. Matt keeps talking for quite a while. There is dishonesty and it, it harmed my re reputation and a community I didn't know about. The edit to me in this movie got the atheist community into an uproar. Aaron Ra, one of the people I look up to, called me an atheist my opponent found on the streets. Now Aaron Ra responded to me, and I think he knows the truth now, but I had to work to repair that damage, and I am still working to repair that damage. I met Suris because he was taking apart this movie, and now I have met my, my community because of it. So while, while my opponent wants to think himself legitimate to debate a question with me, I have to ask, why should I believe a single word that comes out of your mouth? So Matt Powell, does God exist? I don't care. I care about how you misrepresented me, how you misrepresent facts, how you use children to promote your hate mongering. That is what I care about. And if you have any interest in ending our feud, you will respond. And you must stop calling me or anyone else a reprobate as if you are capable of knowing the mind of any God. It is dangerous. It is reckless. And just another example of your disgusting hate speech. I am done. Gotcha. And we will uh, go ahead, Jim.
All right. Well, with that being said, uh, it was a great t uh, 10 minute opening from you as well. Uh, we're going to go into a, uh, a 10 minute cross examination. Uh, so uh, 10 minutes from each of you, uh, 10 minutes from uh, from Matt uh, asking questions of, uh, of Raging Atheist. And then we're going to switch to Raging Atheist. He's going to ask 10 minutes worth of questions to uh, to Matt. Uh, um, if you guys have to respond a, a third time to the same question, that that's that's okay. Let's just try not to get it too out of hand. Uh, and and I will start with your first question, Matt. Yeah. Well, um, first off, I'd just like to state real quick <clears throat> that I was not able to hear any of that video that was playing. You've um, seen it I'm, before. Yeah. Well, I'm more than happy to go back and look at whatever video. And you don't know for sure that I've seen that video. You've before. responded on it several times. Um, it's proof that Matt Powell lied in, in his movie. You've seen it. Well, well and, and you were there. Feel free. Yeah. Ooh. Well, viewer, feel free to go over to Raging Atheist's channel and check it out. I fully approve of all his material. In fact, um, you know, if you guys want to go over and take a look at that, feel free. I'm not ashamed of any edits that were made. Um, I think everything was done in honesty. And the only reason that the atheistic worldview may look silly and kooky and crazy to some people is because that's exactly what it is. And the reason that I say anything that I say is because of this book right here, the King James Bible, my final authority. And so I'm not going to bow to the will of man. And I'm not going to succumb to what man wants. The Bible says, cursed is the man that trusts the man. My trust is in God. My hope is in Christ. And when I talk to, this is a this is kind of a surprising discussion. Um, the topic, though, I think we should try to stay on topic. You know, we could probably end our feud, if that's how you want to call it later let's talk about the topic at hand that all the viewers are here for does god exist and i think that the mathematical equations that we have point to god existing and my question to you would be do you think that it's rational and logical to believe that 10 to the 164th power which is proteins being created by chance happening trillions of times over is a good possibility to happen by itself do you think that's rational and logical to believe that and why will you will you repeat the question do you believe that it's rational and logical to believe that 10 to the 164th power happening simultaneously trillions of times over could happen by chance or do you think it's more rational to believe it happened by design and why um <clears throat> Uh, I think I've answered that question before. This is not the first time you've an ans asked me that exact question, Matt. Um, I'm more interested in how you're trying to pretend like you weren't aware that this is what the debate was going to be about. So um, here's my oh, text message from let, Matt. Let's be fair, though. Let's, let's be fair, though. He, he asked the question as per it's pertaining to his God belief and this is 10 minutes. If you want to respond to that in yours, that's fine. Um, my response will be the same as before. Um, it's the same as before. Matt, it's the same as before. It's the same exact response that you asked me this probably both times I've talked to you face to face. Um, it hasn't changed. I am interested in you asked for this debate, this debate to end the feud. You asked for it. I have the text right here. Tell you what, if you want to settle this once for all, I'll do a debate with you, modern day debate, your words right here on this text message, Matt. So don't pretend like you don't know this, this was what it was going to be about. I've sent several emails to James and to yourself. Do not sit here and be disingenuous with me. If you want to ask me questions and want me to answer you, address the, the topic. The topic is, does God exist? That's the topic, the topic is, how can I trust a word out of your mouth, Matt? Well, well, that, that wasn't the agreed upon topic, though. The, the topic of the, the debate is, does God exist? I mean, you feel, feel free to address that if you want in your closing statement or during the cross-examination. But during the questions, uh, I think they need to pertain to the uh, the topic. All right. That's fine with me. Matt, you can, uh, same answer as before, move on to the next question. Okay, next question. You got six minutes, Matt. Sure. <clears throat> so do you believe that it's rational and logical to believe that a unconscious, uh, dead material um became living and conscious material through spontaneous generation or do you think it's more logical to believe it was designed and this why is your pond or pond scum to human evolution bid um we've discussed it thoroughly same answer move on okay no problem um ernst Haeckel said and i quote he said spontaneous generation must be true not because it had been proven in the laboratory Man, but because otherwise winging 
Yep. Yep. <clears throat> but because right. otherwise, it, but because otherwise, let me restart that question so you can get a clear uh, understanding of the question I'm asking you. Um, Ernst Haeckel said, and I quote, he said, spontaneous generation or life coming from non-living material must be true, not because it had been proven in the laboratory, but because otherwise it would be necessary to believe in a creator. Do you agree mm -hmm. with what Ernst Tankel said? Yes this or no, same, and why? Same Ernst Tankel that he claims to be a father of evolution? I believe he was the co-founder, yes. You, you believe wrong. Um, same Ernst Tankel you claim to have been, uh, well, I think, found guilty of fraud? He was convicted of fraud by his own university, yes. Wrong. Um, same Ernst Tankel that you quote mine nonstop. Same answer, Matt. Move on. Okay. Uh, do you have an answer that you want to give the viewers maybe, or is, or do you just want to move on? That's fine if you don't. Uh, want I'm to. not interested in a answering these disingenuous questions that you always come with. These are, the, it's the same stuff. Oh, I th you told me you was going to come swinging. This is the same stuff spit back again. I thought this was going to okay. be an interesting <clears throat> debate. You, you approached me with a new interesting debate, not the same thing we've always done. Oh, okay. You said you was going to come are you up ready punching. for the next? Come up, come up, you... punching, Matt. Are you ready yeah, yeah. for the next question? Four minutes. Yep, I'm ready. Okay, how many minutes? Two minutes? Four. Better, better Four start minutes. throwing them okay. blows. Yeah, no problem. Um, <clears throat> what is more plausible to you? Intelligent design or things coming into being by chance and why? Intelligent design or things coming into being by chance. What's the point of the question? Um, I probably more likely things coming to being by chance, but what's the point of the question? Because you're you're trying to dismiss evolution, right? No, I'm just asking you if you believe okay. that things came well, into being I by answered, chance or by design, and I answered, why? Why do you believe it's probably by like my fourth or fifth time I've answered that question to you? But I answered. Move on. Okay, no problem. <clears throat> do you believe that it's rational to believe that all the stars, planets, galaxies, oceans, and everything else that's contained in the cosmos, contained in the universe, was all condensed down to an infinitesimal amount of space? And do you believe that that infinitesimal amount of space exploded out of chaos into order without intelligence? Um, I believe it's probably as highly likely that it's that as um, your creator God. It's as good a possibility as any. So you're saying it's possible that God could have created the universe? Yeah, I've said that before. It's not new to you. I, so do you I, think I, it's I, a... grant, I grant the premise of God. Um, would you like to prove to me how you can create or prove that your God was the creator and not any of the other gods? Well, I'll, you can ask me that in, our, uh, in your question time. But I just want to know, like, stuff. yeah. Well, <clears throat> do you believe that it's rational and logical? to believe that an explosion out of chaos produced order man this is the same repetitive crap matt do i believe that repeat it again i should know it by heart but repeat it again do you believe that an explosion out of chaos produced order i have no idea i i, I wasn't there what do you mean Okay, I was just curious. So you said that you, you think the possibility of God is possible. Do you think that's a logical, rational position to believe in the possibility of God? Yeah. Okay, so you believe it's logical to believe in the possibility of God. Thank you. I, I think, I mean, the, the possibility has been put forth by people such as yourself for thousands of years. I think, yeah, you have to consider that possibility. Okay. Um, and I know we just got a couple more minutes here, probably like 60 seconds, so I'll just ask you this question. Stephen Hawking said, and I quote, he said, because there are laws such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself <laughs> from nothing. So from ex nihilo, from nothing, the universe would create itself. Do you believe that that is a rational position to believe in? Do you not know anything new? Right, not my turn. All right. Um, Yes, it can, it's a rational position to believe in. I didn't even really catch it all. It's just the same crap. God, man, I mean, I thought you so, was coming out swinging tonight, man. This is nothing new. You got 30 seconds. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 40 seconds at that point. So okay. One more question. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> so where do you find your morality? In myself. I got it from my parents. We've, we've been over this at least four times, man. Come on, dude. You okay. can't remember like two months ago. 
Well, sometimes the same questions stump the same atheists. Um, and and but, I gave you so the same answer. You <laughs> so, so it's based on what you right, feel inside. So your morality is based on a feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not about what is true. It's about what you feel is true. It's, it's based on my emotions, my experiences, and the society and societal standards that are around me. Um, what we find acceptable as a whole. Um, but yes, it has also to do with my own inner being and what I think is right and wrong. Okay, and thank you. that is time. Uh, thank you so much, Matt, and uh, thank you, Raging Atheist, for answering those questions. Uh, we're going to turn it over to you, Raging Atheist, to ask your 10 minutes worth of questions. And Matt, if you'd answer him, I'd appreciate it. And uh, let's try to keep this on, uh, on topic and uh, let's try to address the questions. All right. Um, so, Matt, why did you approach, approach me yesterday morning with about a debate to end our feud? And then this morning I found out that the debate title was um, Does God Exist? And I got all up in the emails with James here and, and with you. Um, I even emailed you pers or texted you personally and was like, what's up with this? And you called me and we talked and I'm like, dude, I'm totally going to attack you with the stuff I'm going to attack you. But the things that I want to talk about is our feud. The things that you approached me in the damn text message, Matt, was about the feud. So for you to sit here and act surprised is just another example. And you're not, the audience ain't going to see this text message with the camera right there, but they're going to see it in my next video. You asked for this debate, not does God exist, but fine. You want to talk about what does God exist instead? You want to be a coward, Matt, instead of address the issue you approached me with. The issue I reached out to James about, the issue that I have been very vocal about all day in the emails, all day on Twitter. This isn't anything new to you, nothing for you to act like it's new. So please answer it before I ask you some God exists questions. You're surprised. Well, I'm not surprised. You are the raging atheist. You but know, like you're, you're acting like and, it's the debate is ab about something and that you're surprised that I'm coming mm -hmm. at you with this stuff. Why are you acting surprised when you knew when you approached me with this debate? Not does God exist? Well, it's not going to be an honest representative I, of your God, man. Be an honest representative of your God. Be honest for once in your, have, in your life, dude. Well, with all the videos, the reason that I asked you, Ronnie, is because, number one, and Dave can testify to this, Dave reached out to me about a month ago and asked me to do a debate on modern day debate. And he even said you could do it with Raging Atheist, Arn, whoever you want. Um, yeah, just get them to come on the show. Want. And you reached and out to so, me yesterday morning about a debate to end our feud. Did you not? I didn't use the, I didn't use the wording and our feud. Yeah, that was That's the exact the wording, wording Matt. It was the exact wording. Tell you what, if you want to settle this once and for all, I'll do another debate with you. Modern day debate, your choice. I know we, you had wanted to come. You had wanted me to come on your channel. Let's have a moderated discussion. What do you say? That was the debate. Tell you what, if you want to settle this once and for all. Yeah, and it just happened to be on whether God existed or not. That wasn't, what you, said. Videos. That wasn't okay, what you said. That wasn't what you said. Hey, hey oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and step in. If you guys want to debate uh, whatever personal issues you have later, that's fine. But for now, the, the topic All is right. Does God Exist? So, to Does God Exist? I have a permission from a friend to use this argument, Matt. Um, you have pre pre actually presented no proof of God's existence. Let's say God exists, so that means that you would believe in hell, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, and, and I, I have permission from a friend, um, Ocean. This is a brilliant argument he just came out with. Um, and I, I, I promised myself I was going to use this argument if you insisted we stay upon uh, the God thing. <laughs> so um, I want you to grant me some things. Is, is, is determinism true? Go ahead and define determinism for me. We'll just take it as a premise. Um, and I, I just wish you'd be honest for once in your damn life. I really do. So we're going to take it as a premise. Determinism is true. God is omniscient, right? Absolutely. God knows the future, the exact future. I mean, thank you, Ocean, for this for this argument. <laughs> he absolutely does. Sure. All right. I mean, he's the end from the beginning. 
Um, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you're agreeing. Um, coming from somebody that believes that a pterodactyl was killed in the civil war is insane but you're agreeing on this god is the that was quote mine by the way but go ahead keep going uh, you i've seen the picture you showed me the picture all events in the universe have a cause right um this is sourced from the kalam cosmological argument christians most christians agree with it yeah absolutely Um, god is the first cause because he's the creator right sure absolutely he's the uncaused cause but sure God caused all actions in the universe? Not all actions. Well, you don't believe that God caused all actions? What actions did he not cause? Well, the Bible says that God, the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So the Bible says that God set the earth and set the heavens in motion. And so God set everything up and he let mankind have their free will. And and so that's why we have free will. That's why we can make the decisions. So you think that we can surprise God? Well, nothing is surprising to God. How, do you, how would you have free will if, if, if your actions wouldn't be surprising to God? Yeah, that's so, a good question. So, yeah, right, that's, go a good, that's a good question. Um, so <clears throat> say, for example, this is just a parallel to help understand that question, especially for the viewer, because this is important to know. Uh, let's say, for example, I was in the military. Me and Ronnie here, let's say we enlisted, we're together. The raging and, atheists are not Kasuchi, please. Uh, I, I appreciate you doing what you always do. Well, no problem. I understand you have your fantasy name. Um, or the, the it, it is my, it is my Native American name, Matt. You know this. We've been over this a million times. It's my Native American name. You're insisting on using my real name, which you know that I don't like. We've been over this many times. Well, I'm just trying to be as respectful as possible. Just, is is Raging so. Atheist okay? Raging Nak, Nakasuji, whatever you want. Just, just not my real okay. name, please. Okay, no problem. So let's say, for example, guys, that me and Raging Atheist here, you know, uh, we enlist in the military and there's a drill sergeant, right? And let's say this drill sergeant knows what we are going to wear the next day, right? So he, you know, it's like Wednesday and so there's a Wednesday. You're filibustering my time. Yeah, but you asked the question, so I got to answer the question. That's a deep question. All right, so, I mean... So you believe in free will, but you don't think we we can surprise God. Let's move on. So is God a just God? Yeah, absolutely. So God, who is just, only sends the responsible, those responsible for sin to hell, right? Absolutely. So the conclusion of what you have just agreed to is that God should go to hell and is the only one that should go to hell. Yeah, what you said just doesn't make any sense. Well, God is a just God. He he is um, he would only send those responsible for sin to hell, and wouldn't God be responsible for sin? Well, here's the thing. I'm not interested in man's wisdom, okay? The Bible says that the wisdom of this world, the wisdom of man, is foolishness to God. And so God is beyond all space and time, and to limit God's brain down to a finite human brain a, a three pound I think brain that's what such as you're your mind trying to do is well god by definition and being supernatural by definition is outside of the natural and not only that but you're limiting god you're putting god's emotions into your brain and saying well god no, why you, isn't god like this the bible says god's ways are not man's ways neither, neither are my thoughts your thoughts that's what god said god Get created god created the universe right absolutely god is omniscient god knows the future the exact future right Absolutely. you seem to have a, a pretty warped version of free will I, I, you, you think well, you didn't, that we, we you could didn't have let me explain you didn't well, let me explain I, it at all you was you was you was filibustering you was trying to take up all the time I mean, it, it doesn't really. I mean, it, it, it really doesn't require a five minute answer so i mean how can you explain that god should not be the one that goes to hell instead of instead of say homosexual people since you would have them die. Um, how can you say that God doesn't go to hell um, when he is the one responsible for sin? Well, God is not responsible for, for sin. Man is responsible how for is sin. He the not Bible says man's, because God set the world in motion at the beginning. And the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God isn't this puppet master up in heaven. A lot of people have this idea, this crazy warped idea that God's just up in there controlling wait, wait, everything. Did, you agree but he's that given us the choice. You agree that God is omniscient. Yeah, absolutely. But yet now you're saying he's not responsible for the sin he created. 
and that he would know everything that he would happen throughout here's the, the history thing. of the world. He never created sin. But here's the thing as well. We sure would did. not know what love is. He, he, he obviously gave Adam and Eve that, that choice of sin, right? And they chose sin. So he, I mean, he created the universe. He created everything in the universe. He's the only one outside of time, outside well, of the universe. Matt, please explain. You, please explain why your God well, is not in hell. Well, why don't you take this up with the Lord? Why don't you, you know, I how don't call speak God to imaginary pray. people. I don't, I don't speak to imaginary people. But you'll believe that the world came out of nothing, which I violates think, the laws of thermodynamics. I don't think I've ever said that. I think you, you say just I said that it. earlier in the conversation. You say I say that. I say it's a possibility. I don't even know what you're trying to really ask me. Like, can you explain your questions a little bit more? I'm just like, if God exists, why isn't he the one in hell? And why does, say, I don't know, gay people have to go to hell because they love who they love? That's just a silly question. No, it's not. He created well, if God the sin. God created the world. Why isn't he? In he hell? created well, that's the just sin. A stupid question. I think it's. That's I, think it's just, I think it's a great question. Uh, but yeah, my, that's my time. Okay. Awesome. All right. Now we're going to move into a twenty-minute open discussion. This should be very interesting. We're just uh, going to be uh, back and forth. If you guys want to pick up where you guys just left off, uh, that kind of seemed like a good segue into whatever you were getting into. And uh, just feel free to bring up your own arguments, but please. Please keep them to the topic. And I will start 20 minutes whenever you start talking. Please go to Ocean's channel. His version of that argument is a lot better than mine. Yeah, because you need to learn from somebody else. You need to put your faith in man and not uh, in the are, 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 Is the Hoven impersonator telling me or, or gonna, gonna, gonna criticize me about using something that he personally told me I could use in case you were bullheaded enough to try to pretend like the debate isn't what it's really about. So what is what is your question? Are we still in the question period or is this just a discussion at this point? My microphone was coming in and out a little bit when you were talking there. Totally the moderator. Open. Totally open. Totally session. open. Oh boy. Oh well, this should be interesting. <laughs> in you, brain, you you agree in, to it, Doug. I mean you yeah, you I'm, agree I'm to all of this coming in. It. I I you told me, Matt, Matt you, was, you told me I'm going to come out swinging. Be ready, Nakasuchi. Be ready. I mean, I think you probably used my real name because that's what you do. But be ready. And I was ready, Matt, because I was, I was, you know, you know, man, this feud has been going on so long, dude. You had a chance to come in and end it, which it wouldn't have ended. It's not going to end until you end the hate speech. I will always stand in opposition to your hate speech. But you could have had a chance. You had a chance. And you just chose to be disingenuous again and give me all the same shit again. So please, I mean, come with it, Matt. Throw them blows. I have no interest in throwing blows. I just have interest in um, the gospel and the things of God. And when it comes punching. to, I you didn't say I was coming out, out on punching. On I just said that I'm going to come out punching. Be ready. No, I. What I said was that I'm not going to lay off. I'm not going to. I'm not going to step yeah, back like I did in their first two off, conversations. Well, I'm going to take the gloves off and. You know, I'm going to come out punching all of that stuff. Well, I just did, I did say that I was not going to lay off like I previously did. And, um, you know, and if and if you want to go there, we'll go there. So let me ask you this. Um, Stephen Hawking said, and I quote, because uh, you didn't maybe you didn't hear this well enough. Really, I heard a lot of quote. But, I mean, I mean, the, the chat was pr counting them. It was pretty I'm funny. just quoting what he said and asking if you're you agree quote mining, with it. But go ahead. Go ahead. Stephen Hawking said, and I quote, he said that if the expansion rate after the Big Bang would have changed by one part in 100,000 million million, nothing would exist. So let me ask you this, Ronnie. If you and I were in a room. Ronnie, we had again, one... dude, do you oh, not sorry, know? Sorry. I'm sorry. Come sorry. on, man. This is nothing new. We have been through this for four damn months now. Come on, dude. Raging atheist. If you and I were to go into a room full of cups of water and only one out of 100,000 million million of those cups was clean water, would it take intelligence to select that cup or would that cup be selected by chance? And why? <laughs> that's Damn, exact, that's an exact wow, comparison man. for you. Wow, all right, man, this is like the fifth time you've asked me this question. Not today, I mean, maybe the second time today, I can't remember if you asked it today, but you just don't get off script. I mean, who, who gave this to you? Was it Steven Anderson or was it Kent Hovind? They didn't even know I was having this discussion tonight. These are just. Well, I'm just saying, asked, who's, who's yeah, argument, I've asked you that question. Whose I've argument have you stolen question. this time, Matt? Which whose argument did you steal this time? Whose is it? I was just looking at what Stephen Hawking said. 
I mean, I was pretty obvious. Like, hey, Ocean told me I could say this. You're sitting here straight up stealing other people's arguments, not giving credit where credit's due. I'm not stealing anybody's (laughs) argument. I'm using what's true. And All right, so ask the question again. I, I, I get so thrown off by the fact that you're just asking me the same stuff you've always asked me before. I thought we were going to have an interesting debate. I thought this was going to be something new. I thought we'd have a chance to end our feud. I mean, even James put it out on Twitter. Hey, we're going to end the feud, right? No interest in that, Matt. You just made it worse. You just perpetuated it. So go ahead. Just repeat the question, please. <sighs> wow. All right. No problem. Do you believe that it's Lasha? Excuse me logical and rational to believe that the first law of thermodynamics could be violated within a closed system rather than something Jared outside Alcoboy of that system talking about the first law of thermodynamics again holy shit all right um no i i don't believe yes or no let's let's do a different question can i ask a question feel free yeah um how can your god exist and choose you like do you represent the nifb the old ifb the what, what do you represent now? Well, I just represent being a Bible-believing Christian. I mean, and, you follow you know, Stephen Anderson, though, so do, do you subscribe to the NIFB or the old IFB? You, 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 you describe yourself as an independent Baptist. Um, I love all Baptists. I think all Baptists are awesome. No, you don't. As you, far as, like, within the no, old IFB. Because, like, IFB. You, you spent a lot of your last couple months you know, really calling out a lot of Baptists here in Michigan on your channel. Yeah, so you, one. You don't like all, you, you don't like all Baptists. One man who claimed to be a Baptist, but he's not. Yeah, so they're never. Baptist. What's, what's your point? Like disagreeing with like, you. I'm just trying okay, to wonder so, where you're coming from. Let's let's go back to the topic at hand because I don't want us to screw the the viewers over here. Yeah, if God the viewers, exists, the why viewers would he are here. Matt Powell, hate monger to represent him here in this. Oh, debate. Oh, okay, okay. So so we're we're 15 minutes in. We've only been five minutes in. So Matt, will you start? And uh, let's just start with with your evidence that that god exists and then you guys can pick it up from there and i'll I'll let you guys continue sure thing well i'd like to start with just the first and second law of thermodynamics so i'll go for five minutes and then we'll give raging atheist five minutes does that sound good yeah uh, will you just clarify what what those are for the audience though just so so, some some may not know what they are the first and second law yeah so the first law of thermodynamics states um if you google it and and again I, i don't know why people accuse me of you know believing all this wild stuff i'm just saying exactly what the sources say i'm just repeating the exact words the first law of thermodynamics states that matter cannot be created or destroyed it's known as the conservation of energy and matter right conservation of matter and energy so if we are in a closed system and at one point there was no time no space no matter there was just this little infinitesimal amount of space If that space exploded and created time, created space and matter, that would violate the very first law of thermodynamics. So all I'm trying to get the atheists to understand is that it's okay. If you want to be an atheist, that's fine. But it violates the first law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics states that everything in order tends to go towards disorder. Ordered things go towards disorder. Well, we have to ask the question, well, why is there order, right? I mean, if the expansion rate would have changed after the Big Bang by one part out of 100,000 million million, nothing would exist. To top it off, after that, a protein coming into existence, just one functional protein coming into existence from non-existence through abiogenesis, the odds of that one protein alone out of the trillion proteins that are out there in the universe, trillions and trillions, is 10 to the 164th power. So that is an insane number. That number is just beyond crazy and so the bible says the heavens declare the glory of god and now we can see at the microscopic level that everything declares the glory of god that something and it would be very foolish to say that something like that as simple as it may appear to the human eye was not designed and so all i'm stating is that if the universe is winding down why do we have order why did this explosion out of chaos produce order unless there was intelligence involved. Look, I'm willing to grant that even if evolution were true, that this would still have to be the problem that all atheists face. And they're going to have to face this problem, whether they like it or not. And the truth is that there are things we can be sure of. There is absolute truth. And the only reason that somebody will reject believing in God and reject the gun of the Bible is because they, the, the Bible says 
in John 3, 16, we'll just go through this. I'll go for another minute and we'll give raging atheists some time here. But John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible also says, for God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world. So God didn't want to condemn anybody. He may know the beginning from the end, but he's not willing that any should perish. And the Bible says um, that they would not come to the light, lest their deeds should be reproved. The Bible says, he that doeth evil hateth the light. So there are some people that hate the light. And that's the only reason that people will not come to believe in God. Every Boy, woman, man, child, when they are brought into this earth, have a yearning and a desire for God. And that's how God designed things. And to strip that away from a child, to strip that away from people, I believe is abusive and it's wrong. And Richard Dawkins even came out recently and said that pedophilia was okay four years ago. He said, you know what? Pedophilia. He says, I don't have any problem with mild pedophilia. And that's from... The daily, the daily, um, I can't remember the exact name of it, but many secular sources just, and it says the the title of the article is Richard Dawkins pedophilia remarks spark outrage. So even the secular world was outraged, but I'm the crazy one. You know, if you believe in the Bible, if you believe that children should not be aborted and massacred by all these abortion doctors, then you're the crazy one. It's illogical. Uh, And I just want to, I just want to say, that's all I've got. Um, if Raging Atheist has anything to rebut any of that, I'm all for it. We got 10, uh, 10 minutes and 45 seconds, so you can go ahead and respond to that and say whatever you'd like. And th- this is your guys back and forth, so go for it. <sighs> Matt, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just disappointed. I'm, I thought we had a chance here, Matt. I did. Um, maybe, maybe we can move on. Maybe it, it could be a little different. People don't think that, I don't think that you're crazy, Matt, because you believe in the Bible or that you believe in a God exists. As I stated in my opening, that question is a stalemate. You have provided no proof that God exists. I cannot provide no proof that God does not exist. It's a stalemate. I can't prove that George Washington existed. Well, I it's, can't my, prove it's, it's my turn. It's my turn now. I'll let you, I'll let you speak. Like, very hard, but i let you speak. Um, people don't think that you're crazy because you believe in God or you think that God exists, or that you hold to the Bible. People think that you're crazy because you believed some of the craziest things that the Bible says and is open for interpretation and has been deeply rejected by your Christian community. People think you're crazy because you condemn people to death for loving other people. People think that you're crazy because you think that women that cheat on their husbands should be put to death. People think that you're crazy because you advocate that disruly children should face courts and face death. People think that See, you're again, crazy. That's not what I believe. That's but not what these I believe. Are, these are you're all just, things that, that you have. You're just out stuff that you hear from the media. These, no, no. These, these, these are all things that you have here. advocated for, Matt. I have you saying them to me personally. Skylar Fiction has you saying them to him personally. So these are why people think you're crazy. It's the video game comments, all atheists and video games. It's not the fact that you believe in God. I love many people that believe in God. I do not think that they're crazy. What I think about you that is crazy is your denial to be genuine, your denial to accept blame for a wrongdoing that you have done me. You had your chance right now to say, you know what, Nakasuchi, it was wrong. I clearly did it and I'm sorry. You didn't take that chance. I think most Christians would have taken that road. And I was hoping that for you, Matt. I was hoping Do you we want could me have to ended apologize that. for what the Bible no, says. No, I, I, I don't want nothing you don't mean. What I wanted was maybe for closure to this little thing between me and you. I really wanted that. I was hoping for it. You are a fellow Michigander. You are two hours away from me, man. We have met two times face to face and we have gotten along both times. Both of those times we have gotten along. There is no reason for what you did. And I just wanted to, I came into this thinking that maybe we could end the feud, but you wanted to speak about God. So my response to you is that I don't think you're crazy because you believe in God. I love many people that believe in God. I think you're crazy because of the things you say. That's it. And that's all. That is it, and that is all. So I'm crazy because I believe the Bible. I believe what the Bible says. Because you hold to the crazy? Old Testament form of 
justice, and you are not afraid to run away from it. Well, the Bible says the law of the Lord is perfect, so I have no problem with it. And by the way, if my wife committed adultery on me, if my future wife committed adultery on me, I would not under any circumstance want her to be put to death ever. But you I have, would still love her. Have you not advocated so, for that to be a part of the penal system to my face? Do I not have it, you on video saying it? it? In, it in, spirit, in, in spirit of the debate, does, does what you just said invalidate the existence of God and hell? Uh, which one are you talking to, Jim? Uh, you, bud. Uh, very king atheist. Um, like would, the, the, talking about the, the things in the Old Testament, does that invalidate uh, the existence of God uh, as far as the top of the debate goes? I think, um, yes, I think it does. I think that if God is omni, omniscient, omnipotent, if he exists, then he has to be responsible for everything. You cannot run away and say it's free will when God is responsible for all the pain, massacre, murder, cancer, death, children with cleft palates, children like mine with diabetes. He is responsible for all of it. He is responsible for all sin. He is responsible for it all, according to your ideology, not mine. Now, I am an atheist that, get, that grants the premise because the premise has been put out timeless before. Yes, there is a slim possibility of a creator God. I find it highly more likely a number of the other million possibilities are, are more likely. My thing is, and what I've said from the beginning, is Matt Powell can't sit here and prove the existence of God. And if he does prove the existence of God and that God has chosen Matt Powell, the individual with no ethics or integrity to represent him, then that God is crap. Okay. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. We still got Thanks. five and a half minutes. You guys, you guys keep going back and forth. Okay, so <clears throat> first off, your claim that, well, I, I don't like God, I don't like what he says, so therefore he doesn't exist. You know, that's nothing new. And the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. And Richard Dawkins said the same thing. He said, the God of the Old Testament is arguably I mean, if, it, if it's true that, homophobic. God, that God would kill homosexuals for being homosexuals, if it's true that God would want the death of women that cheated on their husbands, if it's true that the God would want the death of children that disobeyed their parents. See, again, those I last two things you just said are straw man. That's not, that's not even what I have ever said or advocated. Matt, for. I have you on video so, several times saying that. Scholar Fiction has you on video saying that. So you might not. Well, I you, believe there's a It would be a better argument. It. It would be a better argument if you came and said that you'd no longer believed in those things, but you have clearly said those things. People in the chat beginning with it is, hey, this is the guy that thinks homosexuals should be killed, right? I mean, they led with it. Yeah, yeah. and you agreed before we went on here that this was not going to be the topic, that the topic was going to be about God. But the Bible, of course, you're going to lie because the Bible says, who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. You're a liar. I'm not lying. How am I lying? You just li you lied. And said, well, we're not going to talk about anything controversial for the sake of James's channel. Well, I, I here said, we go. I, I, no, I did, I, I did tell you directly. I told you directly that eventually, yeah, sooner or later we were going to have to hit on um, your hate speech. Um, and that I didn't want to do it in a way where you would start just flying off the handle with, with hate words towards James's channel. Have I, I said one forth. hate word here? Have I not said yet. one hate word? Not yet. Oh, not yet. Please, okay. Please don't. So you uh, think gentlemen, so, we're, we're well, we just passed the one hour mark. I know that we had talked before the call that you guys wanted to start the Q&A then. If you guys want to keep going, that's fine. But if you want to start the Q&A, that's fine as well. Let's start the q and I'm, I, I was hoping, Matt, and I'm sorry that you didn't come come ready. Are to, you OK with that night or do you have something else uh, to say? I wish you would have came to end it. Dude. Well, like I'm not like one of these typical dudes just in closing. I'm not one of these typical dudes that has to duke things out. And just, you know, yeah. rage. The definition of rage is, <clears throat> let me pull it up here. I have it right here. Not controlling yeah, your emotions. After the, uh, so. the Q&A, I mean, each of you guys get a five-minute closing just to kind of make your case. Uh, so, I mean, if, if you want to go ahead and say something real quick, that's fine. Okay. I'd just like to say that the topic of the discussion has been agreed upon, and it's on the existence of God. And just because you don't like what God believes in and what God has foreordained for every believer – doesn't mean that it's not true and you even said at the beginning of the debate that you don't even care what the truth is you don't care whether god exists or not 
And so not that's pertaining you to don't this care what the truth argument. Is. I don't. And and you're right. You don't I, care what the truth is. You admitted it. James was it's in like the emails. He can sit there and back me up when I say that I said to you and to him what I clearly thought this debate was about. James, right before we came on, reached out to you. I'm not sure if you ever responded. Reached out to you. Are you okay with that, Matt? Um, I'm not the only one here involved in this. In fact, after our conversation, when you agree that we could talk about it, I even put it into the email because it was on a phone conversation that nobody was aware of that Matt agreed that we could talk about this and I wanted to make everybody else aware of it. The emails exist. I mean, you can sit here and pretend for the audience that this is something that you're not aware of, but Matt, you are the liar. You can sit here and call me the liar all you want. I've shown you for a liar time and time again. You came in here lying again. And I'm, I'm sorry, I really hope that we could have ended it, but you're Matt Powell and that's who you are. Okay, let's let, let's move into the Q&A right. and then you guys can have your, your, your closing statement and make your individual cases then. Uh, Matt, I'll let you go first then. Um, uh, James, uh, I didn't get all the super chats. Did you get those by any chance? Okay, I, I know I, that, I'm not getting all the questions. I just, I just don't think I grabbed all the super chats. I've, I think I've got all the questions in super chats and I will send them over to you via Twitter, Jim. And I will get Sweet. us started by reading the uh, first super chat that comes in. And that's uh, from Kent Hovind's CPA. And as I can't help myself every time, uh, uh, it's not really Kent Hovind's accountant. Uh, so just so everybody knows that. And he had asked, <clears throat> take a shot every time. Uh, I think this is supposed to be a typo. Mutt Powell says, quote unquote, here's the thing, or quote unquote, it's like this. So uh, Kent Hovind's CPA, uh, for an accountant, he's quite feisty. Uh, just want to let you know, we, uh, we have uh, opted out of some super uh, readings of some super chats because some are a little bit abusive not necessarily from Ken Owen CPA but uh, the next one as I'm sending it over to Jim it just is gonna take a second as I load up Twitter uh, Ken Hoven CPA also says visine for cheeks it gets the red out but you know what Matt we think that your red cheeks are adorable and more importantly Matt I don't know if anybody knows it but Matt actually just got engaged so if you haven't heard congrats to Matt Powell for that and uh, congratulations so uh it's like seems like Thank an you. opportune time to balance out the insult uh hopefully exactly that's great <laughs> so, uh kent hoven cpa again he is okay i can't say that one next one uh let's see Avidia Nirvana, thanks for uh, thanks for your super chat, so Ken Hovind CPA, and thank you Avidia Nirvana for your super chat. And Jim, I'm sending them over right now. Sorry about that. You're good. My old PC is uh, it's a dinosaur, but it's working here. Uh, what? No. Okay, we're getting there. So uh, Avidia Nirvana asks, when it comes to science, you uh, you sent me the Zoom link. <laughs> I know that's embarrassing. Yeah, I was in the wrong window. One second. Uh, gotcha, this is, gotcha. this is a, a question, though, that it would be. Uh, so basically, they ask, when it comes to science, why should we rule out a creator at the start? I mean, if there were, in fact, a creator, wouldn't this be faulty logic? And uh, they said that question is for raging atheist. I'll repeat it. I'm sorry. No problemo. The question is... When it comes to science, why should we rule out a creator at the start? I mean, if there were in fact a creator, wouldn't this be faulty logic to rule it out at the start? Yeah, I mean, I don't rule out a creator. That's why I was really kind of surprised this morning when I learned of the title of the debate. I wasn't aware of that that was the, what, what the debate was going to be about. Clearly put it in emails. I wasn't ready for that. I spent the first two hours of my morning preparing for a completely different debate. So for Matt Powell to sit here and pretend like that never happened is pathetic um so i don't deny the possibility of a god i think it's one of many possibilities a lot of people call me an, an, an agnostic for it i'm sure steve in the audience would call me an, an agnostic for it no, i am a, a no, damn atheist you, you know <laughs> yeah i don't think you would i mean uh, just to, just to butt in real quick i, I do get you, attacked oh, you're an you're yeah. an agnostic you're not an atheist you know well, no, no, no. I completely disagree. If you if you entertain <clears throat> the possibility, like I think, I mean, if I if I say that unicorn, 
could possibly exist. I'm not agnostic about unicorns. You know, it's just saying that in some possible world, a god could exist. That doesn't make you any less of an atheist. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that because I do and get attacked and with get that, thrown. Let's move on to, to the next super chat, which is from Steve McRae, actually. Uh, for two dollars, thank you, Dave. It says, uh, uh, "What is the formula for the first law of thermodynamics?" I think that's for you, Matt. Uh, good old Steve McRae. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I'd have to Google that. So, like the mathematical oh. formula associated with it, you'd have to Google it. And no average person, no average street preacher, is going to know what that is. So that's just a trick question from an unbeliever um, trying oh, to just trip up question. anybody. So it's just a okay. it's just a question to make it appear like Matt Powell doesn't know what he's talking about when no random person who doesn't study a ton of science is going to even know what that is. So nice try, Stephen Cray. <laughs> but you talk about uh, it so much. I, I, I guess I'm going to not trying to be a jerk. I'm just saying, like it, it's it's not something that a normal just everyday human is going to know. You know, it, it's just. Sure. Uh, the next one from Math Magic, a uh, Math Magic Pagan. Uh, it says, <laughs> it says Stephen Anderson is not a homosexual, and Stephen McRae is not an atheist. Only one is true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, uh, Modern Day Debate for your work. Uh, okay. So I think that was more rhetorical than anything. Uh, but uh, Modern Day Debate had to get the shout out. Uh, the next one is from Joe, the graphics guy, for six dollars and sixty six cents. Thank you, Joe. And it says, Matt, can you show the math or sources to those probabilities you quote? Uh, he's, I believe he's referring to the law of uh, thermodynamics. The first, the, your, your so, refutation to the first and second law. So you want a quote of the first and second? Is this what this guy wants? Is a uh, quote of the first and second law of thermodynamics? No, no, he's asking me yeah, that if you can show the math or sources to the probabilities that you quote. Like well, there's sources. What, what, I mean, it's just, well, right. you don't even, I mean, I think that's just a silly question. I mean, that's exactly what Google is for. We could pull up, we could pull over a computer right now and go on Google and find these answers sure. in two seconds. And there's multiple sources for them. Otherwise, why would well, I sure. even quote them? And so, well, well, sure, but, I mean, but, but I mean, to be fair, though, I can go on Google and, and, and find that Ariana Grande is really a man. You know, it doesn't mean that it's true. So I think what they're wondering is what are your what are your scholarly sources for that? Sure. Well, I'll give the one for Richard Dawkins quote, for example, on the on the laws of physics and so forth. Richard Dawkins said, and I quote, um, he said, <clears throat> let me pull it up here. I know it's somewhere over here. Um, he said that the simplest life has the amount of specified complexity in it of over 1000 complete sets of encyclopedias. That's on page 116 of the blind watchmaker. Get the book, folks. Pull it off of your shelf. Page one sixteen of the blind blind watchmaker. I have tons of sources. Um, okay, yeah. fair enough. Uh, we'll move on to the next questions from Bryce Nance for five dollars. Thank you so much for that super chat. And this is to Matt. It says nothing exploded; it expanded. Also, vacuum fluctuations may play a part. Also, entropy doesn't work that way. And how does that point to Yahweh? Well, number one, the the idea that it's an expansion rather than explosion is just a hermeneutical game. Expansions and explosions are the same thing. When something it explodes, it expands. When something expands, we refer to that as an explosion. So if you just type in, in Google, just type, or even look in the dictionary at the definition of an explosion, one of the first definitions for it is going to be expansion. It's the same thing. It's just a hermeneutical game to make it sound like it's not as crazy as it sounds. And I hate to break it to the atheists, but yeah, it does sound kooky. It does sound like something off Star Trek. And to the question, this is uh, how does that point to Yahweh? What, that there was an explosion? I don't think, I think that if the evolutionary worldview was true and we did come from an explosion, even granting all that, it would prove that it takes intelligence to create those odds because of what Stephen Hawking said about the possibility of one out of 100,000 million million chances having to come to pass. So that would require intelligence. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, next one is from Blue Kool-Aid. Oh yeah, for $5. Thank you so much for that. Uh, it says, why is it that no atheist has caused me to doubt my faith, but most Christian debaters always cause me to question so confusing. Uh, if you wanna address that, you can. If not, we can move on. It's not really a question. Sure, I'm happy to. I'm assuming that's addressed to me. Yeah, uh, so I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing. 
yeah, I have no problem. If there's some perverted person that just doesn't want to retain God in their knowledge, then, you know, according to the Bible, you know, I hope that, that, you know, that they just go that route and that we get rid of all the bad people um, and that they just do their own thing. I'm not saying execute or hurt them in any way. I'm just saying that they need to do their own thing. You know, if they if they want to believe what they want, you know, while accusing me of wanting to believe the Bible, look, nobody wants to believe in hell. No Bible believing Christian wants to believe in that. And so, you know, you can believe what you want. And if you think that one out of 100,000 million million chances happen by itself simultaneously with 10 to the 164th power trillions of times over, then then just go ahead and believe that. But the Bible says and logic and reason says that that's foolish and silly. OK, thank you so much for your answer. Uh, Raging Atheist, not very many of these are for you. So if you want to chime in on that one, feel free to. Um, I'm enjoying seeing Matt squirm. <laughs> well, then I will move on to the next one. Uh, uh, Avidia Nirvana for $2. Thank you for your super chat. It says, for the record, I'm against genocide of any kinds. Also. Me too. Uh, oh, we got, we got some new subscriptions. Uh, Wooly, thank you so much for, for uh, subscribing. Uh, guys, if you want uh, notifications, hit the bell, subscribe, and you'll get uh, notifications when we go live uh, and get, get right in on the action early. Um, continuing the questions from Tyler Durden for Matt, it says, how did, he <clears throat> how did he determine that the Bible was inspired by God and not by Satan pretending to be God? Reels, not feels, please. Reliable method of telling the difference is needed. So the question was, how do you determine that the Bible is inspired by God and not by Satan pretending to be God? Sure. Well, I'll go ahead and logic from his point of view. In today, in, in any day and age, there was always a court system. And within court systems, there's always one or two witnesses, sometimes two or three, sometimes multiple witnesses. You have a whole jury. And so the Bible says that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And so you have four witnesses of the four Gospels just to start the foundation of the New Testament. And not only that, when you pick up the Word of God and read it, you know, that, especially the King James Bible, you know it's the Word of God. And so you don't have any problem with it. If you're a Christian and if you're just good with what God says, you're not going to have any problem with the Bible. And so the reason that I believe that the Bible is the word of God is because of the power contained therein. And not only that, there's thousands of witnesses that recognize the resurrection. And so to not believe in the resurrection, for example, would take more faith than to believe in it. So for me, it's easy to believe in the resurrection. It's easy for me to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because it's a historical fact that 20, 2019 years ago, he died and buried, was rose again. So that's why I believe the Bible. The, the Bible doesn't say that um, nobody witnessed the resurrection. I think it says hundreds, not thousands, witnessed him after um, he rose, but nobody witnessed the resurrection, Matt. So they just reset the calendars for no apparent reason. Well, I'm just saying, just I'm just like saying when, when they showed up to the tomb, it was empty. <clears throat> nobody actually witnessed the resurrection. It was an empty tomb. Well, I'm thankful it was an empty tomb. I'm thankful the Savior's risen. All right. Well, I'm just trying to correct you on your Bible from your God. Well, I could go uh, back. If you guys want, I'll go back and forth with you on this. But I think we're in the Q&A time. Yeah, yeah, I was just, yeah, I was just commenting. You was wrong, just wrong again. That's, that's what you meant by, by starting the calendar over. That's, just, that's the only thing that can be. <laughs> um, so what, the, what the do I mean question. by that? Okay. Yeah. Well, what sure, I mean, I mean, is, if, you, if you don't mind, you don't, have, don't feel, feel obligated to answer. No, I'm, I'm happy to. So the reason we're in 2019 AD is because when Christ resurrected from the dead, it shook up all of history so much. And that's a historical fact. And so that's the reason that they reset the calendars is because when Christ died, was buried and resurrected. And, you know, the Bible says that when they come, when he comes back, every eye shall see him. So that's why history was shaken up. That's why they reset the calendars. I think, I think you're muted. Muted, uh, Jimbo. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying not to not to interrupt you. I had to mute myself. Um, T Tyler Durden uh, says, a debate question for Matt. Do you value the U.S. Constitution? And if so, how do you justify your position that the government should, should execute homosexuals? And if you don't wow. believe it, then why not? Yeah. <clears throat> so... First and foremost, the only way that somebody could become a homo, the Bible says, is the person has to first hate God. They have to just hate God. And the Bible says 
that the voice, that the spirit of God is wooing every man. And when somebody gets to that point where they're rejecting God, rejecting God, rejecting God, God finally takes that limiter off of them and turns them over to a reprobate mind. And so that's the reason why I believe that homosexuals are dangerous and that many of them are child molesters. Because on a common sense level, a man that would have sex with another man would have sex with anything. And so, of course, I believe the U.S. Constitution applies. In fact, in the 1800s, it was perfectly legal if your wife was sleeping with another man to go in and just take the life of both of them. I don't advocate for that. I think that's wicked and sinful. I believe it's the government's job to execute criminals. But with regards to the homosexual community, uh, you better believe that I have a severe problem with them. And we will never back down to the LGBTQ or whatever you want to call them. Um, yeah, that's that's what I believe. And I believe that it's totally constitutional. OK, um, uh, j just for clarification, what, what verse was it that you that you were referring to in the, in the beginning uh, when you said that that in order to become a homosexual, you have to first. Uh, what was it? Well, you have to first hate God. The verse I'm referring to is Leviticus 20, 13, where it says, if a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, they have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall sure. be upon them. Matt, you call me a reprobate too. Just right, to right. But, the audience. But, but you said that, that in order to become a homo, you have to first do something. And what this is just talking about is saying that this is a result of a man lying with another man. He becomes an abomination. Well, no, I'm saying that becoming a homo, if a, if a man has an urge, a sexual urge, play, for another can we man, please refrain so, from saying that word, please? I mean, just, I mean, you can say homosexual, you know, but come on, dude. What what word did I say that offended? You, 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 it's the second time you used it. You know what you just just continue with your point, please. I, I well, I find it interesting how people are offended when we talk about homosexuals, but then since all all sorts of babies I mean, you can are also being call massacred them people. and murdered, they're, they're people. Pe yeah, people in the mother's wombs being murdered, and you atheists will stand up for them, support abortion rights for children to be murdered. You know, everybody wants to make this a news story about. Uh, Matt so it's, 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 it's you know, atheists. This, stop making this about Are you, are you saying this atheists the are the pro life or the pro pro choice movement? That it's an atheist movement. Yeah, well, absolutely. Okay, I guys, hang on. That, 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 that wasn't the question. wasn't the question at all. And we, and we just got a super <laughs> chat. Uh, it says, uh, "Where is the sacrifice if he just rose and went to paradise? Wow. Wouldn't it a sacrifice <laughs> if he never rose after death?" What was the question again? I heard uh, Nagasaki. Where is the sacrifice if he just rose and went to paradise? Wouldn't it be a sacrifice if he never rose? No, because the Bible says that when he resurrected, um, he gave us the hope of the resurrection. And it wouldn't be a sacrifice if it didn't cost him something. It cost him his life. Jesus said, I have the power to take uh, um, to lay down my life, and I have the power to take it again unto myself. Uh, and so therefore jesus or god had to go through death through suffering and so that's just man's wisdom saying well since he didn't just stay there in the grave well then that's not a real sacrifice no god gave up everything in fact god says uh, the bible says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so he gave his only begotten son he gave all he had uh, for people that is the ultimate sacrifice Gotcha. We okay. had another couple of super chats just to make sure that you uh, got oh, this. Oh, sorry, one. I missed, missed them. No, that's all right. You might have already gotten this one, Jim. Uh, Martha Camijo asked Matt uh, what he would do if he had a gay kid. Did you ask that already? Sorry. No, no, I didn't. I didn't even okay. see that one. I'm sorry, Martha. No problem. Thanks for your super chat, Martha. And thanks for the other ones before. Sorry, I was like trying to was scatterbrain, but. Uh, Matt, uh, they, had, they had asked ask Matt what he would do if he had a gay kid. Well, that's like asking me, you know, what if your kid turned out to be Adolf Hitler? You know, what if your kid turned out to be Mussolini? That's not you know? the same thing. And, dude. you know, that's like, you that's, that's the same thing. That's not the same thing. Yeah, I, I, I do believe that. So gay people have killed millions and millions. No, I'm not saying that they, I'm not saying that they have. I'm just saying that that question is like asking me, well, what if your kid turned out to be an ax murderer? The Bible puts it on the same playing grounds. And so, you know, this right here is you. exactly why Nagasuchi. our feud will never end. This is why I will never well, stop making videos on you. Let him, let him, let him answer. Holy shit. So anyways, um, you know, I have no problem with what the Bible says and that's my view. That's, just about any real Christian's view. And I know tons of guys my age that have that same view. 
because it's what the Bible says. And, you know, I'm not ashamed of anything in the Bible. So if I had a kid that turned out to be that turned out to be gay or a homo, um, you know, I would have a problem. I would have a problem with that. And you know what? There are some people that are sexually confused, and I love those people. I hope they get well. Don't and do. I just want to make it clear that there are certain people that are just confused. They're not sure about themselves. Maybe they've been molested, and we should love and pray for those people. And if my kid ever came to me and was confused in that way, I would, I would hope the best for them. I would try to help them with that. With that. Okay. Um, um, were there thing. any other super chat? Uh, there is one, uh, or... There might be a several more. I think that uh, even though I understand that homo is technically like it is an abbreviation of the word homosexual, which I don't think homosexual is derogatory. Uh, I know the rules change or, or things change, but I think homo usually is used in a derogatory way. So to use it is uh, if you're OK with not using it. I mean, I, maybe you didn't know That's that fine. homo is oftentimes used as like even oh, though. It's, he, no, he knows. So uh, we uh, had one other one. This is uh, Talison Oberlander. Thanks for your super chat. We appreciate it. Uh, they had asked, Matt's curse is being a homophobe and a twink's bod. I don't exactly know what a twink is. But <laughs> um, Matt, if you want to respond to that, uh, you can. Well, you know, anybody that... <laughs> Yeah, this is this is and folks, just for the record, anybody that watches this in the future, you need to know that the Bible says to the unclean and to the perverted is nothing clean. You know, nothing is clean to these people. And so these 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 the people. people that hate the God that hate God, you know, nothing is clean to them. It's all impure and all they want to talk about is filth. Look, I don't enjoy talking about homosexuality. The Bible calls it filth, the Bible calls it disgusting. And so it's not I something get that I enjoy talking about. I will get a chance to respond to all this shit, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you'll have a, a closing statement. Uh, as a matter of fact, we probably need to be wrapping up pretty soon. We're getting close to, uh, we're over an hour and a half. So they always have to make it about the homosexual. They always have to, you know, just pull out that card and say, well, see, we got you, Matt Powell. Well, there's, a, there's thousands of men. The Bible says there's 7,000 men that haven't bowed the knee to Baal. And there's tons of people in my church and in other churches across America that are preaching the same thing. The only reason it's shocking to certain people here on YouTube is because not everybody in these churches across America speaks out on YouTube. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And that's exactly what I'll continue to do. We also had another super chat from Maynard Saves. And they had asked or said, please read between Matt's lines, people. Feel free, you know, just examine me. <laughs> I have no problem with that. I guess, what is their question though? Like just read in between the lines? Uh, that's uh, just what it says. So uh, I'm not exactly sure what it means, but we had another super chat and this one was, why do atheists use rape and evolution instead of forceful copulation where the strongest is surviving for the benefit of the species in reproduction reproduction uh being in all uh capital letters i think so is that for me and if it is i don't atheist for rape what <laughs> i think it is for you i don't fully understand it uh so they asked why do atheists use rape in evolution instead of forceful copulation where this i think they're maybe saying like if we've evolved why is the word like an animal kingdom yeah, that might be it. That's probably a better interpretation. Why do atheists use rape and evolution instead of forceful copulation, where the strongest is surviving for the benefit of the species in reproducing? So I think they're. I don't. I don't, I don't use that. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know I'm just a moderator, but I would have to say that what is beneficial for the for the species is not necessarily beneficial for society. Yeah. I, I... I don't think that atheists say we use rape. But I, I don't. I don't even really understand the question, but I am a somewhere lost in strange yeah, I, land I, I, right I now. Mean, I mean, <laughs> rape is very is very <clears throat> prominent in nature. I mean, yeah, yeah, it, it is definitely. Um, it, it is uh, it is definitely something that if, if if it was created, it was created that way. Yeah, I I, I think I need clear. I would need clarification on the question to really be able yeah, to answer true. it. Gotcha. Uh, we had a super chat from the Non Sequitur Show. 
uh, good to see you, Kyle. And he says, F you, Matt Powell. So uh, I think that yep. might be referring to the, the homo word. So uh, we hope that even though this has been heated, uh, I know it seems pretty, uh, pretty heated, but we are one step of progress as we're not hitting each other. Um, next up, uh, Kent Hoven CPA, thanks for your super chat as well. He says, Matt, your parents lied to you about everything. So, uh, let's see. Sad. We uh, are, I think, to the end of super chats, except there's one more that. Um, Ta did uh, we get this one from Bryce Nance, which says, does godliness have to contravene humanity? Do you remember if we does read it, that? What was it? Does, uh, does godliness have to contravene, I think they might mean contradict humanity. Oh yeah, no, I don't, I don't think I did that one. Okay. Thanks for that super chat, Bryce. And I'm not exactly sure who it's referring to. Sorry about that. If I, I, I don't think it does. Um, but I think some people's godliness can, can totally mess up the overall image of, of the religion. Gotcha. And Avidia Nirvana, for the record, I'm, uh, thanks for your super chat as well. They say, for the record, I'm against genocide of any kind. Me too. Great. That is... Are you against the genocide of murderers? You know, are you against the genocide of people like Adolf Hitler? You know, who murdered and massacred a bunch of other people, you know, that I just mean, because I, they were Jewish. By definition, you can't have you genocide know. if you kill one person. Like, if, if, like the genocide of Adolf Hitler, are, are, you, are you speaking I said of the people genocide, like Adolf Hitler. The genocide he committed? No, I'm talking about people like Adolf Hitler. That's the wording I used. And I do believe that certain people groups should be put to death. A murderer should be put to death. People that go around killing other people that should be punished by death. And our American court system says that it should be by death. And since we live in 2019, you know, and all the radio stations and all the media is telling you how terrible it is that these, and you know what? God's not willing that any should perish. I don't want these people to die, but if somebody murders somebody, it's just and right for them to be on death row. And it's a sad thing. It's not pleasant. It's not a pleasant subject. So you're what, equating everybody you advocate for death to to murderers now? No, I was just using that as an example. Mm. <clears throat> uh, do you guys want to move on some more questions, or you want to move on into the uh, the closing statements? Kind of up to you guys. We're 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 kind of uh, uh, most of the questions are from Matt, so I'll leave it up to him. I mean, I don't mind just batting out all these questions with these you know, keyboard warriors in the chat from the atheist community. But I do think we are, uh, <laughs> we're getting pretty close to the end time and my phone is going to die here pretty soon. So um, okay, if you atheists enough. have any questions for me, feel free to just comment on a video. I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. Gosh, okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. And you can find his information in the uh, description box below uh, links to both of their chats. Uh, thank you to both Matt and uh, Raging Atheist for coming out and, de and debating this uh, before you guys do your closing statements. Really appreciate it. And uh, with all that you have experienced and learned from each other, uh, you can now uh, compress that into five minutes and give your closing statements. And you can start with, uh, you can start Matt and I will start your timer when you start talking. All right. Sounds great. So, you know, as we've seen in this discussion, folks, um, there are certain people that it doesn't matter what the truth is. And, you know, there's certain individuals that will say, and I'm not trying to be mean to anybody here. You know, I love people. I want all men to be saved. <laughs> um, but, you know, there are some people who will say, well, I just don't care. And they laugh and stuff. And you know what? If you're listening to this and you're an atheist, you should care. You know, you should care about your family. You know, and if you truly love your family, you're going to look at the evidence and you're going to follow the evidence where it leads. And I think that all the evidence in this debate, even spoken on Raging Atheist's side, really points towards design and points towards just the truth of God's word. And, you know, these people that hate God, they just prove the Bible right. The Bible says they would not come to the light because their deeds were evil. And, you know, these people that are atheists that, you know, support um, you know, the murdering, the mass murdering 
of thousands and millions of innocent children every day in America. You know, people go on and on about, oh, 9-11 was so terrible. Well, you know what? We killed more people yesterday in an abortion clinic than they killed in 9-11. You know, so <clears throat> and then this idea that, well, because Matt Powell grew up in a sheltered home, therefore he can't think for himself. Well, I answered every question from this discussion, and I have no problem answering any other uh, questions that will come up in any other discussions. The reason that I do um, debates like this, I don't enjoy debating. Um, if for me, it's kind of it's kind of like a it's kind of like a sad thing because I don't like to just duke things out with with any random person. It's not my hobby. But the reason that I did this one tonight was for my audience. And when they search Raging Atheist and Matt Powell, the first thing that I want them to see is this video. And I want them to see the truth about what atheism teaches and the bias behind them, you know. And if you notice, folks, my opponent, every time a logical equation, mathematical argument was brought forth, every single time he dodged the question and stated that he already answered it in previous stuff. So I'd really encourage Not you every time. to, well, most of the time. Well, well, can we settle <laughs> with that? Most of the time. I'll agree to that. Right? Okay. So most of the time he did dodge the questions. He would not answer them. But you can see his answers in Science Falsely So-Called. You can see them in previous discussions that we've had that he's put on his channel. And I really recommend them. But in closing, the Bible already warned us about these things in Psalm 14.1. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They have done abominable works. And uh, the Bible says they would not come to the light because their deeds were evil. And it's a very selfish worldview. It makes zero logical sense. And ultimately, you have to deny the laws of thermodynamics, the laws of physics to be an atheist. And if you're listening to this and you want to be an atheist, you don't like Christianity, you don't want to trust Christ to save you, you know, that's fine. You know, but just don't tell me that you believe in science because atheism yeah, is an no, unscientific worldview. So sorry. less than two minutes. Yeah, sorry. Yep, no problem. Because atheism itself is an unscientific worldview. It's not based on science. It's not based on logic. It's not based on how God feels about things. It's based on emotion. And even Raging Atheist said, and I'll quote him earlier in this discussion, well, it's based on what I feel. My morality is based on myself. So he said that morality is based on what he feels is right. Well, can we always trust our feelings? You know, is, is truth about what we feel inside? No, or is truth an absolute true thing? And or is truth a person? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And anybody that believes that mathematical odds, such as the ones presented here, could happen by chance. Any university student, any college student would say a fool would believe that it would happen by chance. And the Bible says that the fool has said in his heart there is no God. So in closing, folks, the Bible says, you know, I believe the Bible. I know I quote a lot of Bible. But the Bible warned us about these things plenty ahead of time. And... Um, I think we just always need to remember that and raging atheists, despite the fact that you and I have been really going hard at each other um, and maybe more you than me <laughs> in that area. Um, it's been a it's been a good discussion. Nonetheless, um, it's been kind of a surprising discussion. And I want to wish everybody on this panel the best. Thank you for having me on. Awesome. Thanks, Thank man. you so much. I wish you the best as well. And my, my little parting word nugget of wisdom would be uh, Matthew 522 just comes to mind. Um, and with that, uh, I will turn it over to Raging Atheist for your five minute closing. We've got a, a few really quick super chats that I just want to quick. Oh, go for it. Uh, Maynard Saves said, I'm in your area. Debate me. I love quote mining the Bible. So uh, I think that's for Matt. And then um, Matt, if you want to respond to that, you can. Sure. Well, I'm pretty nitpicky about shady characters. Um, and I'm not saying the person is a shady character. I don't even know who they are. But if they want to meet with me, I, I'm not really interested in doing debates off air. The only time I'll ever debate anybody is on air on a panel where I'm speaking to an audience. Because honestly, I mean, I have hopes for uh, Nagasuchi here, but I have no expectation of reaching him. I have expectations of reaching the audiences and have done that successfully. For years and we'll continue to do that so if you want to film a discussion with me um, as long as i can film it great send me an email 
Gotcha. And then also Maynard Says, thanks for your super chat too. Uh, also, debate Aaron Ra, you stud, is what Maynard Saves says. <laughs> so if we can get Aaron Ra uh, to come on Modern Day Debate, would you debate him, Matt Powell? I would debate Aaron Ra in person. I would not debate him over the internet because then he would be able to interrupt. One of the things Aaron always does is he interrupts his opponent just over and over and over. But in person, under a controlled panel, on camera, on a professional set, whether he'd do it or not, I'm not 100% sure, but he offered. He says, well, you fly me up to Michigan, and we'll have a cup of coffee on camera. And then he says, I guarantee you the result will not be the same as it was in your movie. So he was he was convinced that you know, his science fiction religion is what I call it. It's true in that he'd... So, of course, I'd be more than glad uh, to have a discussion with Aaron in person, not on the Internet. Okay. I heard it was the other way around, but maybe I was wrong about that. Sorry. One more super chat. Uh, Martha Camijo, thanks for your super chat as well. Uh, she says, keyboard warrior, come talk to a bisexual pagan. So I think she's inviting you to have a chat with her. If you want to, if, if you guys want to come on modern day debate, you you guys are welcome to come on. Uh, well, I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a ton of interest in debates. Um, debates just are not my thing. I've been told that I should do them more and more, uh, but it's just, it's really not my thing. The reason I did this one today is because when people Google raging atheist, I want this to be one of the first things that pops up. I'm not ashamed of any of it. And in fact, I'm, I'm pleased at how this went. And, um, but yeah, I mean, and, and by the way, the keyboard warrior thing, like, look, I'm not trying to be mean to anybody. I'm not trying to be rude or arrogant anyway. It's just that, you know, a lot of these people, you know, they, they talk a big talk, the atheists do. But then when you corner them, they, they, it, they, their religion just turns totally sci-fi. And it just, it bothers me. I wish they'd be a little more honest in that sense. <laughs> gotcha. That's my view. That's my view. Okay. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just saying, like, you know. To Jim. I'm just being as honest as I can here. No, you're fine. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, we're we're going to know, I don't see any more super chats, so let's go ahead and turn this over to Raging Atheist for your five minute closing, and uh, that will uh, that will do it. I just want to say again, uh, thank you to both of you and uh, to everybody watching. Thank you for uh, coming in and watching. You can subscribe real quick. And uh, uh, with that being said, Raging Atheist, go ahead and uh, give us your five minutes. Matt, you had a chance, man. You know, I mean, I was never going to stop making videos of you, but maybe our conversation could have changed back to a more positive conversation. Um, you approached me with with ending our feud, with getting it over with, with duking it out. I've approached you several times trying to get you to answer um, the misrepresentation of myself in your movie. I thought I was finally going to get that. Um, I found out today that it was changed. Um, I went along and said that it's fine because after a conversation with you, you said, well, we'll, we're, we'll call the debate that, but it'll be a wide ranging discussion. And I have no problems if you discuss um, what I wanted to discuss tonight. And I was very open about what that was. Um, I think that you had a chance to really maybe bring it back to the level to, to do that third one-on-one face-to-face -on -one -face conversation like we spoke on the phone about this morning. Um, if you just came in genuine, maybe a little contrite, like, and I'm not even worried about the movie, Matt. I'm worried about the rhetoric about gay people, homosexuals. I'm worried about the homophobic slurs that you leave on 85% of the comments that you leave me include homophobic slurs. I'm worried with you calling me a reprobate that has led to death threats of my child. Of my child, Matt. Yeah, I don't believe that at all. Well, you can, you can. I don't believe that. I've got death threats too, Matt, due to all this. I let you speak. You can take your disbelief and shove it up your you ass. Gotta, oh, hey, hey, hey guys. Oh, okay, okay, hang on. Let's just have been up. threatened. Let's not, I've let's been threatened. But reading aging atheist to finish his. Uh, I, I apologize. And I told myself I would, but you can take your disbelief, Matt, and I don't care what you do with it. I have been threatened be with the words reprobate time and time again. You have called me reprobate time and time again. I was hoping that you would come and resolve this issue. You chose not to do so. So instead of a resolved issue, all you did was sit here and show yourself for the hate monger you are. And all I had to do really is sit here and let you do it. And I don't think I ever 
want to speak to you again. I mean, th that face to face, it's done. It's not going to happen. Um, this will be my last Matt Powell conversation. You got two minutes. You disgust me. I am done with you. Gotcha. And with that, also want to mention uh, we, in addition to having a controversial one tonight, we will have a probably controversial one tomorrow. We are having a gentleman on who's it's going to be a triple threat, atheist versus Christian versus black Hebrew Israelite. So uh, we know that uh, someone mentioned that uh, there's concerns of like black his, uh, the black Hebrew Israelite position being uh, what you could say maybe black supremacist. But uh, if that is the case, our hope is that even though they are coming on, uh, it's a there's empirical data to back a uh, view in sociology called social contact theory. It's the idea that uh, if we develop relationships with people who are black Hebrew Israelites, um, which are allegedly uh, divided when it comes to race, uh, we are hoping that we could kind of uh, help, help uh, both sides to kind of become synthesize so uh we know that'll be controversial as well and we have a couple of super chats that just came in so i'm uh, just going to quick read through pardon my delay on those uh one was maynard saves uh, rage thanks for exposing this fallacy and barry switzer who says matt gives christians a bad name so matt i guess those are kind of uh, both directed at you if you want to respond you can Sure. Well, real quick, you know, the Bible says I am for peace and I am for peace. But the Bible also says, but when I speak, they are for war. So, you know, these people that hate my gods and that hate Christians, um, you know, I, I love them. <laughs> you know, I love pretty much everybody. And I want the Bible says God's not willing that any should perish. So, um, you know, just because the Bible says certain things that may, maybe somebody doesn't like, doesn't mean that it's not true and that we shouldn't believe it. And then also, you know, I just want to reiterate when I, I am for peace, but when I speak, they're for war. I am going to be having a, a, a I'm going to be going live after this. Anybody that wants to come and talk to me is more than welcome. Um, yeah, send me a link. Yeah, I, I will. Thank you, Jim. Um, and man, I, I just never want to talk to you again, dude. You, you please grow. Maybe when you grow, we'll talk. Okay. All right. I think everybody's had their their closing statement. Uh, that, wow. I don't I don't know what to say. Uh, I would ask James what he has to say, but I think he has less to say than I do. <laughs> I mean, James, I, I don't think you was surprised by where the debate went. I was in the emails all day. You know, I mean, well, I, I I just want to say thank you for both of you uh, both of you coming out. Uh, I'm uh, I look forward to seeing you guys discuss your your personal issues in the in the future if that is the thing. If not, then that that's fine as well. But uh, thank you to everybody viewing. I think we got to 175 people I saw watching. That's that's amazing. And thank you for all the super chats. Thank you very thank you. much, everybody. Thrilled to have you here. And as mentioned, we hope that. Uh, when it, I'm, not, I'm not crying i'm just flabbergasted <laughs> somebody i think there's talk to me sorry <laughs> we uh hope that even though <laughs> there is disagreement that people can learn about each other and hopefully uh a good concrete example of social contact theory is the movie remember the titans so basically <laughs> the idea that you get to know each other and eventually see that you're not so different after all and then hopefully uh you saw hopefully you saw the remember the titans if you haven't i hope you do so with that i want to say thanks for being here everybody we hope you have a good night and thanks again to the speakers thank you for your questions thank you for your super chats and thank you jim majors for your help in moderating and with that keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable take care everybody